Well, good morning, Firm Foundation family and friends. And to all of you in the virtual world, thank you for joining us for our Sunday morning worship service. Welcome to Firm Foundation Outreach Ministries. We are so delighted that you've chosen to worship with us on today. Today is our very first Focus on Your Family Sunday. So we are totally virtual. No one is in the sanctuary. And we hope that our Firm Foundation Outreach Ministries members are enjoying themselves at home, on vacation, or wherever they may be. Again, we hope that you all enjoy our service on today. And we are so thankful that you've chosen to worship with us. Enjoy the service. We can just worship him on today for he is our strength like no other and always know it doesn't matter what you're going through on today that his strength will reach to you so if you will just worship him give him praise give him glory give him honor for who he is and all that he has done You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other, reaches to me. You are my strength, oh, oh strength like no other strength like no other reaches to me in the fullness of your grace in the power of your name you lift me up Lift me up in the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name. You lift me up, hallelujah. Your strength on today you are my strength he's my strength strength like no other reaches to me in the fullness of your the power of your name you lift me up you lift me up in the fullness in the power of your name you Oh, you lift me up 
Bless your name, Lord Jesus. You are my strength, strength like no other. 
strength like no other. So we bless God and we thank God for this portion of the service for praise and worship. And we thank God and we pray that it has been a blessing to you. Now we're going to continue with the series, guys, which we are in. So I want you to go to our keynote scripture. Our keynote scripture coming from, because they have me on the timer and I want to make sure I stay on my time. Um, we're going to go to Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, the third chapter. Proverbs, the third chapter. And if you have it, signify by saying amen. Okay, so Proverbs, the third chapter. Here is the foundational scripture for everything that we are doing. This is the foundational scripture for this whole series that we're in. So anytime you're getting confused about where we're going, you go back to your foundational scripture and you are able to do that. Right then, you're able to go back and understand exactly what we're trying to convey to you. We believe the Lord has given us to try to convey to you. So, in Proverbs, the third chapter, and I want you to go down, uh, starting at the first verse. The word of God says, My child, forget not my laws, but let thy heart keep my commandment. For length of days and long life and peace shall be added unto thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the tables of thy heart. So shall thy find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil and it shall be help to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. The topic that we have been dealing with for this series is titled, My Umbilical Cord Was Detached. Now let us go before the throne of grace, as we always do, always does, in prayer. With heads bowed, Father, we honor you, we bless you, and we thank you for this opportunity you have given us once again to come before the throne of grace. We thank you, Lord, that we know that it is nothing that we possibly could have done that have given us such a privilege. But Lord, it's your love, your mercy, it's your kindness that is everlasting. And we thank you, Father, for the blood of Jesus that have covered us. So Lord, I pray right now that the saints are in the moment, that they have a heart to hear what thus says the Spirit of the Lord to them. Help us, Lord, that we may remove any distractions that may cause us in any way, form, or fashion not to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to us. So Lord, be merciful to us. And bless us, Father, that we may continue to grow in you, through you, and by your word. Oh, Father, I pray that you bless us, that we do not let one morsel of your word hit the ground. But we may take every bit of it for the purpose of growth, Lord. I pray right now, Lord, that you remove any demonic spirit that comes up against the children of God with the purpose, Lord God, of pulling them away from that which you want to give them. Lord, bless the saints wheresoever that they may be, Lord. Wheresoever they are at in this day and time, Lord, I pray that you bless them. Keep them whole with a mind and a heart to serve you. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We honor you and we bless you because you have taken the time from your word, taken the time through your word, and taken the time by your word to bless us, and we stand firm on that. So right now, by my own free will, I give the Holy Spirit the power of attorney over the message right now. Let him speak to thy people as you will, Father. And for doing this, we'll be so careful to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. For this is a prayer we ask the Holy Spirit to deliver to the Father. For it is both in the name and under the blood of our Lord and our Savior. For you are Jesus. You are the Christ. Now, if you're in agreement with that prayer, saying, say amen. Again, our topic is, my umbilical cord was detached. And as we denoted, guys, was is... Um, Past tense words, that meaning you have made the corrections of whatever needed to be done to make sure that you are now connected back to the Father. Because an umbilical cord is the life nutrients that is given to a child by a parent to make sure that the, parent, that the child grows healthy, to make sure that the child grows strong. So what we want to do is bless God and make sure that umbilical cord is attached to the Father until the time that God tells us it's time for you to move forward. So I've taken the time, and our, our subtopic is, I was detached from my 
and we have different my or his. But I just want to go back and give you a touch of a definition, a definition of what um, one of the words that we have distracted, which is detached. Now, one definition for detached was the, as follows. To separate from a large mass without violence or danger. That is what we're looking at when it comes down, guys, when it comes to detached. There are some people that have detached from the body of Christ. There are some people that have turned their backs on the body of Christ. You think you can go your own way. You think you can do what you want to do. You think you can do it your way. And that's not what God is asking of you. What God wants you to do is stay attached to the body. But when you have Christians that go their own way and do their own thing and think their own way, they find themselves out there making their own laws. God is not obligated in any way, form, or fashion to take care of our law. God is obligated unto his word. So his word is what we stay with. His word is what we will stand on because that's what God is going to endorse and that's what God is going to raise up. That's his word. And so we bless God as we are going forward. We are now um, to the bullet point we have went down to. I was detached from his word. And we was in bullet point number three. Now, bullet point number three on his word was how could I have gotten into such a mess? That's what we were, and that's what we left off at last week, and we want to touch bases with that right now. Now, let's go back to that, guys. I want to go back to the book of Romans, and in Romans, the first chapter, we were, the question has been asked. The question has been asked, how could I have gotten into such a mess? Now, many times you'll find yourself as a person that have drifted you are not anchored to anything, so you have drifted off. A, such a mess can also be a person when you find yourself in a financial crisis because you did not take the time to have a budget. If you do not have a budget, you are winging it. And when you are winging it, you will get way off course and not even know it. So a budget is something that keeps you balanced. A budget is something that lets you know exactly where you are at. It's like the lines in the street when you are driving. Those lines are to keep you on your side or keep you lined up to where you need to be. And so the question is asked again, how could I have gotten in such a mess? Well, the word of God told us how a person could get in such a mess. I want you again, go with me to Romans that, um, first chapter and verse number 18. Now, there's a little reading that we're going to have here, but you need to understand what we're trying to convey to you via God's word. You need to understand what he's saying. So pay attention closely to the word of God. That's the safest place to be is in the will of God. And God's will is his word. Now, look at Romans, the first chapter, verse number 18. And we'll read it as far. It says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of man who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that, because that which may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even the eternal power in Godhead, so that we are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an, an image made unto corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affection. Even their, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burning in their own lust, one towards another, man with man, working that which is unseemly, and receiving, in the, and receiving in themselves the recompense of error 
which was me. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which was not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without, un without understanding, covetous breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Do you see what God is saying? You ask yourself, how did you get in such a mess? You have just enough God in you that you will not do these things, but you take pleasure in living vicariously through the person that is doing it. And God is saying, no, 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 no. That's not the way this goes because one thing we have learned here at Firm Foundation, and that is you need to understand how the devil has set this thing up how this thing goes. The devil understands he has been studying man since man's creation. Because you need to understand the devil was here first. Now remember, the devil was here before God created Adam. Because that's what took place before God created man. Um, the heavenlies was there and the angels was in heaven. There was a war in heaven and the devil fell and was cast to the earth. And so when Adam was created, the devil was there watching man and watching how God moved with man. And so the devil understands when people get into a mess, how do you get there? Well, the devil knows. And we have taught over and over again. It starts with a thought. The devil want to get a thought in your head. Because if he can get that thought in your head and work that thought in your head long enough, it will go down to your heart. And then as that thing stays and fester in your heart, sooner or later the word says from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. And you take it out of your mouth. And once those words come out of your mouth, a new spiritual world has just opened up. That's why the word says the power of the sentence of life and death is in your tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You have to be careful what you say because you may pronounce a curse on yourself and you may take the blessing from yourself. You need to speak the word of God regardless of what it looks like. God don't care what it looks like. It's what God said it is. And so you will find out what the devil's doing is to get you to start just thinking on these things. And so how do you do that? In this day and time, we're in social media. You're constantly looking at somebody in their foolishness. You're constantly looking at something that someone says, and that is resonating in your spirit. And sooner or later, you take on that spirit. So you start thinking foolishly. And then after thinking foolishly for a while, you start speaking foolishly. And after speaking foolishly for a while, you start acting foolishly. So what it has to do, you have to change that terminology by changing what you are thinking about. And the way you change it is what you are viewing. You have to be careful who you are hanging around. If you have a friend that's just, well, the person is not saved. And the saved, the non-saved is going to do what the non-saved do. But it is not your job as a believer to hang around the non-saved. So you got a whole list of things that God is just going to to begin to point a thing out. Now, here is something you need to understand which God is pointing out. He says this. He says, um, verse number 26. Verse number 26, he says, for this cause, God gave them up to vow affection. For even, as a matter of fact, let me focus in on for God gave them up to them. Because they, um, well, there it is. It, uh, verse number 21, it says, because that, when they knew God, they glorify him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish hearts was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. What do you see that before? At? What has that happened at before? It happened back in before man got here in heaven. The devil, he was the exact same thing because he says, because that when he knew God, he glorified him not as God, neither was thankful, but became vain in his imagination, and his foolish heart was darkened. 
That's what the devil did because of what God blessed him and how God blessed him because of the gift that God gave him because of the anointing he had. He thought it was about him instead of the God that gave it to him. And so how do you get in such a mess? You say, wait, you begin to think about um, the gifts that God has given you. You begin to look at what you have accumulated and how God has blessed you. Maybe you have a good job. Maybe it is that you are able to bring in a great amount of resources as far as um, with money, and you're able to buy a lot of things. And you think because you have things, you think you're better. You think you're better than you are. And so you're beginning to walk around with your chest puffed out as if God needs you. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither was thankful. You're thinking it's all about you instead of the God that gave it to you. And so with that taking place, you will find out there's a change. There's a change. Down to verse number 25. This is what it says. Now, that's how you get. The person will get, this is how they get into a mess. They begin to think on these things, think they're better, and change the truth of God into a lie. And worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever and who is blessed forever. Amen. So God says, I don't mind you having things. I just don't want you praising things. So that's how people get into a mess. You have a nice car. People begin to praise your car. You think it makes you better because you got a car. You live in a nice neighborhood. It's gated. You think you're better because you know the code. So what God is saying, when you have this mindset, you become arrogant in your heart. The beginning, of, the word of God tells you, that's the beginning of a fall. A haughty spirit, that's a puffed up spirit, goes before destruction and pride before the fall. When you find a person that's thinking it's all about them because of what it is that you have accumulated on this earth, you are already on the downfall. And so you begin to see, they're saying, um, after these things, you begin to see all kind of crazy things take place. So in actuality, what is happening is when you turn away from God, everything goes upside down. If God say forward, you go backwards. If God says stop, you move. If God says go up, you sit down. So no matter what God says, you go opposite. And that's when you know a person has turned their back on God. They go contrary to the word of God. And so God says he just began to give a whole litany of things, guys. And you need to take the time to study the word of God to find out what is the definition of these things. He says, being in 29, he says, actually, listen, verse 28, verse 28, look at this. He says, in verse number 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, retain means to hold. As I said before, when a woman retains water, you'll find out she's, she's holding on to water. You'll find out, as I said, in school we had what we call retention. A person, a kid that was retained, they did not let them go forward because they did not retain, meaning hold, because they did not retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a reprobated mind to do those things which was not convenient. So God is saying, if you're going to do it, he's going to go ahead and let you do what you do. Now, that's not something that God just flippantly does. That you have already shown that no matter what God says, you're going to do your thing. You're going to do it your way. Have you ever seen that person? Have you ever talked to that person when you're trying to tell them something and you can clearly see the expression on their face that they ain't listening to nothing you say? They're going to go do what they're going to go do. Your job is to step out the way. Let them go do what they do. As I say, let them go and let them grow. Because life will teach you. So that's what you have. And so it just begins to go through all of these things that you find. A whole litany of things God's telling you about the mindset of a person. But what I want you to do is also, and I want you to go with me to the book of Galatians. This is off um, Galatians, the fifth chapter. Now we're going to go there because this is tying in to this. You want to know how do people get in such a mindset? You want to know how people um, end up getting into a mess? How did I, the question that we ask is, how could I have gotten into such a mess? Well, you'll find it, guys. You'll find it right there in Romans, the first chapter. And Paul also addressed this issue in Galatians, the fifth chapter. Now, Galatians 5 and 16. If you have your Bibles, go with me there. And I'm just um, off there. But it says in Galatians 5 and 16, it says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that ye cannot do those things which you would. 
But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, haters, variants, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, hearsayers, envying, murder, drunkenness, reveling, and such like, of the which I have told you before. Now, when Paul said that, he's saying, I told you this in Romans. Of the which I have told you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So this line that the devil have going out into the world, that you can be saved and do everything that you want to do. You see Christians on the club for clubbing it. You see Christians doing all the things that the world's doing. You see Christians with a body count higher than the world. You see Christians smoking most of it. You see Christians drinking all of it. All of these things you see Christians doing and the world is sitting back in a state of confusion because they saying if you are saved and your God can't keep you from any of this, why do I need them? And these are the things that we'll begin to face. But listen what Paul says again in verse number 21, the latter part. He says, I told you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not. Now, you've got a problem here. You can believe the preacher that's making you feel good, that's tickling your ears, or you can believe the word of God because God has put his stamp of approval via the Holy Spirit on the words which Paul spoke. Led by the Spirit of God. He said, they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So there's only two places in business, heaven and hell. And if you do not inherit the spirit of God or the kingdom of God, there's only one place that you can go. Holiness has a standard to it. Holiness just don't speak any kind of way. Holiness just don't act any kind of way. Holiness just don't dress any kind of way. Holiness just don't think any kind of way. Holiness don't hang around everything. Holiness is just that is different. And if you can hang around all those things and they are not affected, you may not be in a state of holiness. Because light around darkness makes darkness flee. But God will stand firm on the things. He will back his word and stay with his word. So that's what Paul was saying. So you will look at verse number in Galatians in 5 and verse number 21. Well, it's the same thing in Romans 1 and verse number 32. Listen what he says again. Again, you see what he has said in in. Um, Galatians 5 and 21. Now let's go back to Romans. Romans 1 and 32. Five, Galatians 5 and 21 and Romans uh, 1 and 32 are the same thing. So in Romans 1 and 32, listen what the word says. Who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So what God is beginning to point out to you, the word of God is beginning to point out again. Not only God don't want you doing it, he don't want you endorsing it. You got to be careful what you're clicking on. Because what they're doing is the algorithm. AI is reading the algorithm of what you're doing. Let me tell you something. AI will tell it on you. AI will tell it on you. When you go to these social media things, especially on TVs, the first thing they're going to do is they want you to sign in. On my home, we have, um, of course, we have um, Roku. And Roku asks you, okay, who, who, who is this? You know, so you can pick your character, who you are, and you can then go by and click on the things you like to watch. So when you go back and you click on you, all of the things you like to watch, they're there. They're there. But you got to be careful what you're looking at because it will also give some suggestions. If someone click on your profile, what things will pop up? What things are going to show up? Don't be saying, well, I don't know why this is on here. That's because you're looking at it. So what he's saying here is, as Paul is beginning to point out via the word of God, he is saying, not only people that do it, you may step back and say, I never do that. But God knows you enjoying the person doing it for you. You are living vicariously through that person's life. You are living your life 
through that person's eyes. And God says, I'm going to hold you accountable in the spiritual realm for what you do. There's a standard, saints. There's a standard for holiness. Just because you go to church, don't make you saved. There's a standard that God is proclaiming and is asking us to stand on, asking us to live by. There's a standard that God wants us to stand and proclaim. But if you are acting like the world, looking like the world, thinking like the world, tell me, then what has Christ done for you? What different are you than this world? And so that's where you will find. You will find what God is trying to get you to see. That is what Paul is pointing out. Because he listed all of these things that the flesh does. Well, how did the flesh get to do these things? Or how did we get here? That's because you would not hawk to God. You decide to do your own thing. That's why the word said, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. So when you know what God has told you to do, and you refuse to do that which God has told you to do, you have opened up to the devil. Because let me tell you something. God is not going to tell you step two if you have not done step one. What good would it be for God to tell you step two and first step one is not done? And then you go on to step three and step one is not done. You go to step four and step one is not done. And then if you don't forgot about you having done one, you got at the end and you found out you still lost the race because you did not start at the first block. You have to do exactly what it is that God has called you to do, saints. You have to believe God and trust his word. Holiness is not just something that is said. It's something that is done. Holiness is an action word. Something is going to be done to be holy. You're just not there to be holy. That's not the way it goes. You have to stand before God's word and honor God. Bullet point number four. Bullet point number four up under his word. God's word. We're finally saying you're detached. You, um, subtopic is um, I was detached from his word. His word. So in bullet point number four, his word. It says, being tight on God's light, keep things right. Being tight on God's light, being tight on God's light, keep life right. Now, what are you saying? Being tight on God's light, keep life right. What is that, pastor? What is that, preacher? Well, what I'm saying, tight means to really to study something. You are tight on that thing. You have learned that thing. So when you have learned God's word, that light is God's word. Being tight meaning I have studied. I have studied and meditated and thought on God's word. That's what his light is, his word. Will keep your life right. If you do that, God will keep you in line and you'll find out things will work for you. Go with me to the book of Acts. To the book of Acts. Back one book from where we had in Romans. Go back to Acts. And I want you to go to Acts, the 17th chapter. And I want you to drop, guys, 17, and I want you to drop down to number 9. Acts 17, verse 9. Again, being tight on God's light will keep things right. And we need to understand exactly what it is that God has for us. His word. His word. Listen to what the word says. It says in verse number 9, it says, it says and, when, and, and when they had taken security of Jason and of the others, they let them go. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night Unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily whether these things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, also of honorable women which were Greek, and of men, not a few. So as you begin to look at God's word and see what he's saying here, let's exegete this to see what God is sending us here, guys. Let's exegete this to see what God says. Again, now what he's saying is take his security of Jason and the others, then let them go. So what was taking place here, you will find out that Paul was being held. They was after Paul. And so they took Paul free. And they was trying to get at him. And so what they did is after they had gotten a hold of, gotten to what they wanted, they let Jason and them go. This is what they said, but this is where the word of God stands firm. And here's why I love the word of God. This is what I mean when I'm saying being tight on God's light will keep your life right. Guys, this is what he's pointing to. He says, this because you can go to churches 
And all churches is not exalting the name of the Lord. All churches is not preaching the word of God. The psalmist says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against thee. That's what we said in our keynote verse. Trust in God with all our heart and not lean into our own understanding. We stand in on his word. His word is what moves us. So in, in Acts 17 and verse 10, it says, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea. Now, they sent them into another city, the city of Berea. Now, these people was a little different than where they were in Thessalonica. Because here's the difference between the, dif the, difference between the two. Because when Paul, they, when Paul got to Berea, Paul did what he always does. We have studied the God's word over and over again. When Paul came into a new city, he always went into the synagogue. He would sit down with basically the day, church. And he would sit down and listen to the teaching. And Paul would explain things more perfectly. Or Paul would take the same thing and begin to um, debate with those that are teaching erroneous teaching. And a lot of people are taking things in because you are not skilled enough in the word of God to know what's right and wrong. Because the person carries the title of a pastor or the person standing up talking don't necessarily mean that person is right. You need to stay tight on God's word. And so that's what it was. They sent Paul away and he says, um, sent Paul and Silas away by night who coming thither went into the synagogues of the Jews. So what did Paul do? He went straight into church. In a new city, same old Paul. I'm going to proclaim the word of God. I'm going to teach the word of God. I'm going to stay on the word of God. Because a person have a smoothness about themselves, the way they talk, because a person do a thing a certain way, all of a sudden people just want to flock after that person because they have a strong personality. But sometimes a strong personality need to be rebutted. And you don't argue with a person. You just stick along with what Jesus said. As a matter of fact, before I go any further here, I want to go back. Well, no, I'll tell you what. Put in the hopper. Be ready to go into Galilee, um, to, um, Matthew. Matthew, the fourth chapter. But right now, we're going to stay right here because we're going to look at what God is saying. So again, Paul goes into, the, goes into the temple or goes into the synagogue of the Jews. And this is what happens here when Paul goes in. Verse number 11. He says, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica. This is what he's saying. These people were more serious about the word of God. These people were more um, learned into the word of God. They studied. They took it for real. You have some churches where they just doing their own thing. Some churches, they just going their own way. But God is saying, no, no, no. What I want to do is I want to stand firm on my word. I'm going to stand on my word because my word is what's going to get you through. And so you'll find many people don't move to these things. They'll go and do their own thing, and think because we don't run around, we don't shout it, we don't touch the few people, that we're in line with God's word. We had an awesome time in church. The spirit was high in church. God's word was, oh, it was awesome. Well, what did y'all do? Man, the spirit was so high, I don't even know what that man talked about. Well, how do you know what he deposited into your spirit? You got to understand that your name has power to it. You can take a check. And if you write your name on the bottom of that check that's yours and you lose that check, you will open up for anybody to write whatever they want on that check and get it to your account and, and begin to deposit that or begin to withdraw that. What is being deposited in you? So this is what he's saying. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness. They're not going to argue with God's word. They want to hear what God has to say. Okay, Lord, I'm not going to I'm not going to rebut you. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to debate with you. God said it. I'm going to believe it. That's going to settle it. This is what you're saying, Lord. That's exactly what I would do. And so that's exactly what was taking place right there. He says, and they received the word with all readiness of mind, meaning they had their minds open to receive and and search the scriptures daily whether these things were so. They just didn't go by what Paul said. Because prophets such and such come in town. The prophet said it. I believe it. But what did God say? Because the pastor said it. I believe it. But what did God say? Because my mama said it. I, what did God say? You have to stay on what God said. Because that's the only thing that God is obligated to perform. His word. So he said they received it with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily. 
That's why it bothers me when I look at a church or go to a church and the preacher never even opened the Bible. What? What is this? The people never even, open. you see them, they never even open the Bible. They're just sitting there looking. Now, if you are that good, the way you can quote, you can quote all of the scriptures, no matter where they're at, I mean, every bit of it, you're, you're, you're really, really good. But I'm telling you, you don't know the word like that. So you should be able to go with the person word for word to make sure that's what the word says. Because you're going to find out a lot of the Bibles, they're changing them. They're making them say something that God never intended to say. They're leaving out some things, and they're adding in some things. Now, that's why it's important for you to have a walk with the Lord and know God, because God has promised each and every last one of us that when we come and give our life to Christ, that God has already blessed us. What did he say he would do? He would give us a gift. That's the Holy Spirit. He is the one that wrote the Bible. So if something is in error or someone is teaching something erroneous, the Holy Spirit is going to send up alarm bells and say, that is not me. That is not me. That is not what I intended. So you will find God's word that goes there. So you find out these people are different. These people got into the word. Therefore, many of them believed and believed also honorable women, which were Greeks. So this thing is not for just um, a certain group or click, uh, click. The word of God is for everybody. So this is saying, guys, what he is pointing to here. Um, Therefore, many of them believed also of honorable women, which were Greeks. What he is saying is the word of God is just not for church people. It's for the drunk. It's for the crackhead. It's for the prostitute. It's for the dope dealer. These people are searching just like you were. These people are hurting just like you were. These people were lost just like you are. You were. So what you did is you, when you found the word of God, what you did is you did begin to hold on and you now found light in darkness. They still in darkness. That's why they acting like darkness. But what you have to do is continue pushing them along the way and teaching the word of God. Stay with God's word because God is only obligated to perform his word, not what you say. You may say some stuff that really sound good, but if it's not God's word, that means he's not going to put his anointing on it. Because if God anoints what you say because it sounds good, then God has to anoint what this person says because that may sound better. And now he has to anoint what this person says because that sounds even better than theirs. But here's the problem. With all this anointing that God is putting on everybody in their own thoughts, what about his word? So God is only going to anoint his word. So that's what I was saying there and we're trying to point out to you. You find out they stood with the word of God. That's what they stood with. These were, number 11, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica. These were more noble. And I pray, I pray that uh, Firm Foundation is like the Bereans. We are just like the Bereans. We're going to take the word of God. It's going to be proclaimed to them. I want the people, that's why I tell them, get the word, go with it. Every now and then, I misquote something on purpose to make sure they're paying attention. That's what I want to do with the people of God. I want to make sure they're tight on God's word, that they're able to understand clearly what God is saying. So when somebody is feeding them something erroneous, they're not taking it in. It's like something bitter going in your mouth. Immediately you spit it out. I want nothing to do with this. So, and that's what it is. God's word is everything. God don't want you getting in an argument with nobody. God don't want you fighting with Just say what God's word says, say, and you're in a safe place. Now go with me, if you will, to the book of Matthew. In the book of Matthew, in the fourth chapter, we're going to back again what Paul is saying here. Matthew, in Matthew, the fourth chapter, in verse number one, I'm going to have a little reading here, about nine verses that you will be able to understand exactly the importance, the importance of knowing God's word. It is important. You can't get in an emotional state. Remember, if you are emotional, the devil can lead you where he can drive you. That's what the devil does. See, when you, are, uh, when, you are, when you are led, that means you made a choice to follow that person. That's why Jesus lead his sheep. But the devil will try to drive you. So be led, not driven. When you are led, what you do is you stand on God's word. You do what God says, you do what God's word has told you to do, and you're in a safe place. But when you are driven, you'll find out you're getting your emotions, you're getting your flesh, 
And we've already learned in Galatians, the fifth chapter, the works of the flesh and all that manifests through the works of the flesh. If you see what God is trying to keep you away from your flesh, then you see that there is a war that is going on. Your flesh against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. But look at Matthew, the fifth chapter, I'm going to say fourth chapter, and verse number one. Then was Jesus led of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. You are going to go through a battle. The devil is going to show up. You better have your word right. You better be like the Bereans. You better be tight on God's word because the devil know the word of God too. He just knows how to, he knows how to misquote it. It says, verse number two, it says, then it says, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungry. And when the tempter came unto him, he said, if thy be the son of God, Command that these stones be made bread. The first thing the devil is going to do, he's going to come after you where you are weakened at. Jesus had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. It's normal. He is hungry. So the devil is going to go after him. There's nothing wrong with eating, but have God told you to? Fasting means you have set aside this time for God. This is something set aside for him. So if you have fasted, meaning I'm going to give this to God, have you heard from him yet? Have he told you what to do? If God has not told you to go forward, stand still. You don't always have to do something. Sometimes the hardest thing to do is sit still. The hardest thing to do sometimes is nothing. And so that's what he says. Um, he wanted to command that these stones be made bread. But listen to what takes place. He says, but he, being Jesus, answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It is written. What did the Bereans say? What did Jesus say? What should firm foundation say? All I want you to say, saints, is it is written. But you better know what is written. And when you quote what is written, God will stand behind it if what is written is God's word. But if you're quoting anything else other than God's word, you'll find out God is not obligated to take care of it. Verse number five. Then the devil took him up into the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thy be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, the devil knew what was written, he should give his angels charge concerning thee, and in thy hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone. The devil knows the word of God. The devil understood what he was saying to Jesus. If you are the son of God, jump, because God has already said if you're healed, not one of your bones is going to be broken. So if you jump and something breaks, that lets you know you're not God. You're not God. That's what the devil was saying. That's what was taking place when Jesus was crucified and he was on the cross. And they went up to him because the hour was getting nigh. And they wanted to make sure that he was dead. And they looked at him and they needed to make sure because if he hadn't died, they had this big mallet or the sledgehammer, if you will. And they would crush the legs of the people so that they would not be able to lift up and get a breath. Therefore, they would suffocate. So if they would have crushed Jesus' legs, Jesus would have suffocated. The suffocation wouldn't have been the problem. The problem would have been that his legs was crushed and one of his bones was broken. Therefore, you cannot be the Messiah. But when they came up to him and they found out when they pierced him in the side and out came water and blood, they knew that he was dead. There was no need to crush his legs. So therefore, he fulfilled the scriptures. Not one of his bones was broken. Also, he said he was pierced in the side according to Isaiah 50 and 3. So you're beginning to see. That's what the devil said. So jump. Jump. Because if you're God, you can prove to everybody you're God. Jump because you won't break no bone. But what did Jesus say again? Jesus said unto him, it is written again. Stick with the word, baby. Be like the Bereans. Check the scriptures daily. See if this is so. It is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And again, the devil took him into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, all these things will I give thee if I will fall down and worship me. And the devil understood those were heals because God created them. God gave them to Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve gave them to the devil when they chose sin. Now the devil had this. That's why the word of God says the devil is the prince of the paladins of the airways. Jesus said if this was my world, I would take it. But he's saying, no, 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 there's a time span. There's a time span here. And so what is taking place is you're beginning to point out Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. I'm going to stand firm on God's word because the devil says if you do this, if you just fall down and worship me, I'll give you all these things back. 
It was a trick question because it was a trick or heads I win, tails you lose. That's what the devil was trying to throw at Jesus. Why? Because what he was saying is if you fall down and worship me, I'll give you these things. But if you fail down and worship me, you acknowledge that I'm greater than you. So even if I gave them to you, I own you. So therefore, I own it. That's why the word says the world, the world is the Lord, the fullness thereof, the world and everything in it. And Jesus answered this question in verse 10. He says, then said Jesus unto him, get thee hit, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord God, and him only shall thou worship. Understand something. After you go through that kind of a um, traumatic time, you will find out God shows up after you have went through the trials. Then the devil leave him, leave him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. All your job need to do is to do what God say do. Your only job is to say what God say say. Your job is to go where God say go. You make sure you do it the way that God has called you to do it, and you will see that God will stand behind you and endorse you. But if you are one that's doing your own thing, doing it your own way, going your own route, not like the Bereans, but making your own word instead of searching the scriptures to make sure the scriptures are speaking to you, you will find out you will be way out there and you don't know how you got out there. You won't be tight on God's light, so therefore your life won't be right at all. God says to you he wants you to stand firm according to his word. And if you lift him up, God says, I will draw all men unto me. I have your life. I will fix that situation. I will bring Bring you through. I will get you out. I will bring you around in this thing. But you have to obey my word. You have to obey that which I have called you to do. If you do that, saints, God will show himself mighty on your behalf. God will show himself mighty on your behalf. Being tight on God's light will make things right. It will find, saints, that God will bring you through. God will deliver you out. God will get you through this. You have to trust God's word. You have to trust God's word and know without a shadow of a doubt that God has not misled you in any way, form, or fashion. For God said in his word, Lo, I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. Father, we thank you for this time that we have had in your word. I pray and plead the blood of Jesus right now that something was said that was beneficial to your saints, that they may be able to take the word that they have heard and apply it to their life. I have not given my opinion, Lord, but I have showed them via your word what you expect out of us as believers. Oh, Father, my Father, I pray that you bless the saints, that we become just as the Bereans are, that we are not in a state that's baffled trying to figure out how did we get here. Nor, Lord God, are we lost because we are not tight on your word. But we stand firm on your word, Lord, and search the scriptures daily. Every day, making sure that we examine our lives to make sure we're doing what it is that you have called us to do. Oh, Father, my Father, I plead your precious blood. Bless the saints, Lord, that they would not let your word be wasted. Someone out there, Lord, that may have heard such a word for the first time and has intrigued them, Father. Oh, Father, I pray that you let your spirit, Lord, manifest in their lives that they may have more of a hunger, a yearning to know more about you. For your word states, to whom much is given, much is required. So Lord, as we know more, you expect more, that we may see more of your glory. Thank you, Father, for hearing this prayer. Now, I believe by faith that you have already honored this request. For I ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me ask a question. Is there anybody out there? You've been listening to the message and it has just stirred up something in you. And you're trying to find out what is it that you are asking of me, Lord? What is it that you're asking of me? You feel the Spirit calling you, but you're not sure what is going on. If you're someone out there and you have never given your life to Christ, you have never given your life to Christ, and you say, well, I want to get this thing in line with God. I want to straighten this thing up that I may walk according to God's word, abide in his will, law and way. If you're that person and you say, I want to give my life to Christ, I want to walk you through God's plan. 
of salvation. But before we move any further, I want you, I want you to ask this person that once knew Jesus, meaning you once walked with him, you once obeyed his word, you was one that was faithful in church, you was one that was tight on God's word, but for some reason, you are now asking that question, how did I get here? You walked away. The devil slowly, methodically took it out of you. And now you found yourself, you're lost. In the church world, we call it backsliding. So you ask yourself the question, how can I get back in line with God's word? Well, I want to walk you through. If you've never known Jesus, I want to walk you through God's plan of salvation. But if you were one that once knew him and you turned and walked away, I want to walk you through God's plan of rededication. Just bow your head. says, Lord, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this door that is open before me. I right now, Lord, want to take full advantage of the opportunity. I want to walk through this door that is open before me. I boldly come to you now, Lord, and repent of the life of sin that I have been living. Forgive me, Lord, for living your life my way. And I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, if you will come into my life, I will serve you all the days of my life. I am requesting you, Jesus, to come and rule my life. I make this confession that I accept Jesus as being my Lord, and my Savior. I accept Jesus as the ruler of my life. And I ask you, Lord, sit on the throne of my heart, and I will forever serve you from this day forward. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my cry. Thank you, Lord, for accepting me. I, by my own free will, accept Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you have prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of Almighty God. Welcome home. Now, you may ask the question, what do I do now? Okay, I've given my life to Christ. This is new to me. I don't know what to do. Well, how should I feel? Should I be rolling around on the floor or something? No, no. What you do is you get to a good Bible believing church. You sit down and you take in the Word of God. You are tightening up in the Word of God. You may say, Well, I don't know a church like that. I'm one that I just came into this Christian thing tonight, today, this moment. I have given my life to Christ, so I'm not sure what to do. Well, stay with us and we will continue proclaiming the Word of God and teach you the Word of God so that you will be able to get stronger and be able to join yourself with other believers that would encourage you along the way. You would say, well, I want to come and visit you guys. Where are you located? We are located at 1851 Highway 66 South in the city of Kernersville in the state of North Carolina. If you get off either of the 40s and get on 66 heading back towards High Point, soon as you pass the new 40 or if you've given off the new 40 or the big 40, a 40 bypass, if you will, about a half a mile on your left-hand side, you will see us, Firm Foundation Outreach Ministry. We would love to see you. We are a shaky, handy, lovey, huggy people. That's just what we do. We love the saints. We love the people of God. There are no strangers here. So we would love to see you. You say, okay, what time do you guys start? We start on Sunday, Sunday mornings, 10 a.m., Wednesday evening, virtual only, Wednesday evening. At 7 p.m., we would love to see you. Now, you may say, I want to support the ministry. I want to support the ministry. How can I go by financially supporting the ministry? Well, you can go to our website, firmfoundationoutreach.org, our Facebook page. There is a QR code where you are able to give there. I will assure you, every dime is used according to God's standards, according to God's word is used for the kingdom of God. 
everything pushing the kingdom forward, everything helping the kingdom to grow. So you find yourself and you say, I want to donate. We are so thankful. We bless you and we will honor God. Now you may want to go to snail mail route. There it is, the address, um, Firm Foundation Outreach Ministry, 1851 Highway 66 South in Kernersville, North Carolina. We thank you for the time that we have had together. We look forward to seeing you right here on this page, right here on this channel. You be blessed in Jesus' name.